Why don't we call it Championship Saturday? Shouldn't we? I think we should. I'm Norman Seawright. This is 13 Sports Zone. West Virginia's best cheerleaders were all in Charleston to show off what they have and hopefully bring home a title. First up, Class AA. You are looking at East Fairmont's routine. Robert C. Bird wins the championship with a score of 337.35. Logan is the runner up with a 318.65 score. In order after the Wildcats, Lewis County, Lincoln, Mann, East Fairmont, West Side, and Kaiser. In class AAA, you are looking at the Brook High School cheer, and you'll see Capitals routine following it. Brook finished runner up to Spring Valley. The Timberwolves won the title, the score of 339.60. In order, after Brook, Wheeling Park, Woodrow Wilson, Jefferson, Capital, Martinsburg, and Hurricane. And in class single A, you are seeing routines from Valley, followed by Tug Valley, and then Wheeling Central. Tug Valley is your single A champion with a 314.25 score. The runner up, Tulsa, scoring 313.75. That's a close one. After that, Wheeling Central, Cameron, Clay Battelle, South Harrison, Valley Fayette, and Fayetteville. We are still early in West Virginia's 2017 high school basketball season, so we're taking in some girls basketball this evening. At Winfield, the team's home opener against Point Pleasant. That's what we're looking at. After the jump, the first to score, the Generals. Lauren Hudson feeds Emily Hudson, they're twins by the way, for the short jump shot. She had eight points tonight and she kept on going. Next trip down the floor, Sydney Cavender in transition. Amara McGraw almost out of bounds, back to Emily Hudson. Another short jumper, another two points. So yes, the first three field goals of the game belong to Emily Hudson. That's the third one, assist to Lauren Hudson. And as soon as that shot falls, Emily, part of the full court press, forced a turnover, hit Mar McGraw in the lane for a layup. That's perfect. Seven points for her tonight. The Generals dominated the first quarter 21 to 3, and they dominated the Big Blacks 54 to 16. In men's college basketball, the backyard brawl happened in Pittsburgh tonight. Bob Huggins' Mountaineer squad is 1 and 4 against the Pitt Panthers when on the road, or they were before tonight. Rivalry basketball is the most fun basketball. Let's get down to business, shall we? Lamont West went to work first with back to back three pointers. After that, Sagaba Kanate coming in with the crowd pleasing antics. If you're a Mountaineer, you really like this dunk a lot. And on the other end, if you're a Mountaineer, you will love this block. And you'll love it even more than the dunk. West back to work from beyond the arc as the Mountaineers lead by 10 halfway through the first half. A shot from Lamont West again. Javon Carter is on fire. Watch him work. Three straight shots from three point range. WVU's got the juice and a 38 18 lead with five minutes to go. 40 seconds on the clock. And yeah, that's the guy with the final say they have. Javon Carter, another three pointer. A team high 19 points tonight. West Virginia took a 46 to 25 lead into the locker room at halftime. The Mountaineers win 69 to 60. They are still undefeated in the United States. Their only loss is to Texas A&M in Germany. Marshall men's basketball on the road tonight. The Thundering Herd beat the Toledo Rockets 93 to 87. John Elmore led score with 25 points. Ideen Peneva had 24 points. In Division II basketball, University of Charleston took both teams to take on Notre Dame College in Ohio. The women were defeated by the Fighting Falcons 57 to 77. Marissa Kub led Golden Eagle score with 13, followed by Michelle Noel with 10. The men beat the Falcons 103 to 76. Kerry Anderson led scoring with 24 for the Eagles, followed by Lamont McManus with 19 points. West Virginia State sent its teams to play Urbana in Ohio. Women won 109 to 99. It's a shootout. Shea Hines led Yellow Jackets score with 28. Jasmine Davis scored 26. The men won as well, 90 to 83. Pat Johnson Agu led the Jackets with 26 points, followed by Ernest Jenkins with 21 points. In one week, Marshall football plays in the New Mexico Bowl. Today, Marshall football spent some time with some fans. At Walmart in Barbersville, the Thundering Herd held a Christmas toy drive and a raffle. Now, while doing that, the players signed some autographs, met some fans, and then they enjoyed themselves by playing video games and playing basketball. You know, things that would get you and me kicked out of a Walmart. This is a good thing, though. Marshall football is unique in its relationship with its surrounding community, and this is a perfect way to give back when they're not destroying shelves. It's a once in a lifetime thing. I tell you what, I've been a Marshall fan all my life. And my wife went to our first game back against Miami, Ohio. We had uh, third row seats. 
and she was hooked. This is awesome to see all the players up here. I'm looking forward to seeing the play against Colorado State next next Saturday and go herd. Well, the people get a chance to come in here and talk to us and we get a chance to talk to them. You know, we get to hear about their experiences at the games and, you know, the close games they got to watch and everything. And, you know, it's just great to hear it from their perspective and all these people that, you know, have so much love for the herd. It's really great. It's really great to see. And that's part of being a student athlete, community outreach. This is a great thing to see, honestly, and I love it for these guys. Absolutely, yeah. Getting out to meet people. I'm yeah. Sure everyone, like you just showed us. And they're excited. all telling them, you know what, hey, we're so excited for you to go play the New Mexico Bowl. All right. And that's a great thing. Oh, and well, we're looking forward to it, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. We're going to take a live look over the capital city. Some snow is continuing to fall in some parts of the mountain state. More when we come back. Stay with us.